Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Fay Answers Questions. I'm your host, Joshua Fay, and today I am joined by my parents, as Hello. always. Hello. And this week we have my brother, Ben. What's up? I'm back. Okay, this week the topic is food related. So the first question that we're going to be asking is, is packaged food healthy or can it be healthy? Um, no, <laughs> because most packaged foods that proclaim to be healthy or anything else look really good on the outside, but then when you flip them over and read the amount of sodium that they pumped into those things just so they don't um, expire and they remain preserved, uh, it will make you crap, <laughs> literally and figuratively. <laughs> Good. I'm glad you brought that up because I've got some packaged food right now with me that I thought was pretty good. But um, sir. This is... Oh, careful, um, careful. Say from, names. Don't say names. Don't want to get sued. Just say names. Anyway, it. it's from Tasty, Tasty Bite. Hashtag not sponsored. But... Um, and don't sponsor us because we're about to crap all over your food. Well, no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> But they do they do a, a lot of uh, curries and ethnic foods. Uh, a lot of their stuff is non-GMO. It's organic and uh, either vegan or vegetarian. But and all of it's kosher. So I know the other week, uh, mom and dad, you guys were talking about how you stopped eating things with ingredients that you can't pronounce. Yep. <laughs> on the package, um, but you'd be glad to know, like the back of this. It's all just stuff that you can't pronounce and you guys have all seen every day. Uh, like, for example, on this one, the uh, Indian Bombay potatoes, uh, the ingredients are water, potatoes, onions, uh, chickpeas, tomato paste, sunflower oil, oil. yeah, <laughs> garlic, salt, and then various, you know, spices. What's the sodium content? If you eat the whole pouch, it is 40% of your daily intake. Wait, does it taste good? Yeah, it tastes really good. <laughs> it's better than a lot of stuff I've found. Um, but they also do like packaged rice, and I've got one here that's ancient grains. Um, so it's millet, uh, sorghum, amaranth, and with wheat berries, whatever wheat berries are. Wheat berries. And turmeric. Wheat. Sweet. <laughs> it's wheat. They just yeah. decided to make it a berry afterwards. <laughs> they took the individual <laughs> bits of wheat. Hops. It's not wheat grain anymore. It's wheat berries. Wheat berries. Yeah. So much more. Yeah. Hipster. Yeah. But um, I will say for, for the rice and the grains, um, it's, it's really good. Like for the ancient grains, it's got that 100% whole grain. Uh, sticker on it and it's 92 grams or more per serving um, so you get all your grains the whole grain there you go in there yeah i think if you uh you know if you go to the grocery store i think everybody knows pretty much that anything in the middle aisles that they have processed is not good for you not healthy um instant potatoes and uh you know cookies and that kind of stuff are definitely not the healthy choice no not at all and then if you go into the frozen food section which i think you know when we talk packaged food we were talking like stofas and Mar marie oh, calendars yeah and, you know all of the uh, you know hungry man meals and, uh uh healthy choice you know healthy choice which has 260 percent of your daily sodium intake um, you know hypertension just looking at the box um <laughs> you know uh so there's a i think generally speaking those type prepackaged meals that you buy in the grocery frozen food section i don't think any does anyone think they're healthy even if they have healthy choice written on them no, because I've looked at them and I bought some of those for a little while as a healthier alternative to like, say, the devour meals or something else like that when I was taking them for lunches for work because it was quicker than making a sandwich in the morning. And like there's that, like the healthy choice. There's like um, 
the lean cuisine ones, I guess. There's um, there's another one that I I looked at. I don't remember the name of it, but they, again, with all of them, you can taste the sodium in them, yeah. and you're like, ah, this doesn't taste too bad. Water, <laughs> water. <laughs> Everything's dried up. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so yeah I, I don't know like they they can make them taste good and get good taste but the sodium is just astronomical in all of them and then you can't help but like come home and whatever else you cook for dinner also has salt or sodium in it so then you're just blowing your sodium intake up for the rest of the day and then you feel bloated well here's the thing I mean they're not something you want to eat all the time they're okay in a pinch instead of going through you know instead of going through a drive through and grabbing something it's it's a different choice but you also have to remember that salt follows water so if you're eating something that has that much sodium in it you're going to have to drink two to three times more water than what you were just to flush it out of your system and that's why movie popcorns are so salty because you're going to drink more. You're going to keep going back to get soda to quench your thirst, which isn't going to do it. Is anyone able to pull up a healthy choice meal on their laptop real quick? One moment, poor favor. Figure out the ingredients in those. And I'm saying healthy choice can be any fast food, any of those frozen food. I just uh, pulled it up. Um, uh, images. Wait, let me look up nutrition facts. Ah, nutritional nutritional information. Right. While while he looks that up, uh, mom and dad, when was the last time that you guys ate anything packaged food wise like that? Like that? Yeah. Well, maybe not healthy choice, but like something like packaged that wasn't your uh, like whole food kind of stuff that you. Oh, wait now. for it. Wait. Are you ready for it? Yeah. Uh, last weekend. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what? <laughs> what did you I, eat? Oh, whoa, stop the presses. Whoa, stop the presses. Stop the world. <laughs> this is. Uh, we bought french fries. And we did fish and chips. Ah, all right. With brown go. gravy. Not true vegans. <laughs> we, true vegans. we never claim to be true vegans. We Vegan never community, not- sharpen your pitchforks and light your torches. You have two to crucify. <laughs> I'm going mean, to this this whole podcast is just credibility out the window. I introduced you guys as vegans. What the hell? We are 99% of the time. But you know, occasionally I like a good fish and chips with brown gravy. Okay. Uh, okay. Anyway, yes. So there you have it. She's to blame. She wanted it. She drugged me down the dark path. I was not gone kicking and screaming. Isabel. <laughs> <laughs> Try not to eat fish, chips, and brown gravy. Brown gravy sucks. What? I hate brown gravy. Well, I guess you're not coming home at Thanksgiving or at Christmas thing because we were going to do that for one meal for you guys. That's fine. I'll do mine sans brown gravy and just add malt vinegar. Malt vinegar is good. Okay. Um. So this is a healthy choice. I've actually had this one before. So this is healthy, healthy choice cafe steamers. Oh yeah. Um, so it, these are set up as the sauce is in the bottom and then your right. stuff's on top and it steams it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the package itself, the calorie content is only 280 calories. I think bad. Calories from fat is 54. Uh, the total yeah, fat. 280, 54 of it's from fat? Yes. <sighs> total fat, 6 grams. Saturated fat. Uh, I think that says 2.5. Uh, yeah, 2.5 poly polysat fat, 1.5 monosat fat, two grams. Those are that's all in grams. Cholesterol, 40 milligrams of cholesterol. That's 13 percent of your daily intake. Sodium. Is everyone sitting down? Yes. 510 milligrams. <laughs> 20 is 21 percent of your daily intake of sodium uh, <laughs> potassium is 590 milligrams carbohydrates 32 grams because it's a pasta dish uh, dietary fiber is five grams sugars is three grams 
Uh, protein, 23 grams because it's a chicken dish. Uh, vitamin A, 10%. Vitamin C, 25. Calcium, 10. Iron. Uh, well, whoever... So, honestly, though, out of, out of all of them, that one's not that bad. Yeah. Oh, and this was a, from a picture from Dr. Betty, Betty, blah, 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 Dr. Becky Fitness.com. Don't sue us. Um, she <laughs> gave it... She gave it a C plus rating for, I guess, her clientele. Yeah, that's not that bad, okay. though. I mean, you know, and again, it's it's like anything, anything in moderation. You know, are they are they the healthiest thing you can do? No, probably not. No, um, probably not. But you know, outside of buying fresh, organic vegetables and cooking your own at home uh you know it's better than running through mcdonald's and getting a quarter pounder and fries yeah true and for me they've they've put me on the night shift um so i'm working you know 11 o'clock to 8 8 or sorry 7 a.m so for me grabbing these like tasty bite packaged meals that are you know vegan vegetarian and like whole grain that's it works for me like it's, it's much a healthier choice than just grabbing something quick sure absolutely but those ones that you're eating sound a lot better even better than the healthy choice meals yeah, well i mean the only thing different is like if i eat the whole package it's you know 41 percent of my sodium intake for the day which is you know 940 milligrams of sodium yeah but if you're not pouring salt on everything else you're oh, no. uh, yeah. you know but I mean, it, it's a, like I said before, it, it's a, it's used for a stopgap type of thing or when you don't have the time or your situation is such that you're working an odd shift. That's great, but it's not something you're going to eat every day for the rest of your life. No, absolutely not. But I will say at the store that I go to, there's only like four different variations of these meals and I have eaten all of them multiple times and they're getting a little old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, like commissary. Yeah, it's a commissary. Yeah, commissary sucks. Anyway, so okay. again, it's uh it's um it's a that that there which surprises me actually because that's a shelf stable product. That is not a frozen product. No, nope. shelf stable it's in a package they say i looked at the website and they say how they package it in these um packages it's similar to canning it but it's in the right bowl. does it have a preservative in it other than salt just salt hmm. if they do it like a hot bath like they're canning it then you mm -hmm. wouldn't need anything else you'd be fine yeah, good to go but I, like we've been talking the past couple times about you know like what you eat and how it affects your health let me just give you guys a really good point so for the past couple of weeks all of a sudden my eyesight changed and i was having trouble seeing my contacts were killing me i couldn't see so i made the appointment went in today and i don't have to have a contact in my left eye anymore and my right eye has improved greatly and he was asking me, well, what's changed? What's going on? And I said, well, I've been pretty much vegan for a year now. And he's like, well, that could have something to do with it. So, um, I'm going to doubt that. Super hard that it's got something to do with that. I don't think your diet will change your eye shape. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Veganism is I mean, Jesus Christ. It will heal your, it's your blindness. A cure -all. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it's a cure-all. But he also said that, you know, he's seen it happen before, but, you know, but also okay. remember that I, my left eye I use for near side for seeing up close and my right one is for distance. So. Okay. From a family of people that have a blind as bats, uh, you know, the fact she doesn't need a contact in the left eye is a vast improvement. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, I'd say blind is bad. It's negative two and a half and negative three is not that bad. Oh, uh, well, my right eye went to, it depends on what we're going to do. I've got three different ones to try because my vision actually falls in between them. So it's either um, 1.25 or 1.5 negative. 
There you go. Weird. Anyway, right. eat your beets. Beets <laughs> are good for your eyes. Damn. I'm not saying oh. that being vegan changed it. I'm saying what you eat does have an effect on your on your body. Okay. Yes, that, that I will agree. Is what you eat does have an effect on your body. Um, All right. So fun, hold uh, on. Fun sorry. fact, real quick. Fun uh, fact. Oreos are vegan, so if you yes, want, they're not good for you. <laughs> no, but if you guys are looking for something, Oreos may be vegan, but there's so, so much sugar in them that you would be keeping me awake for a week. I never said they were good for you. All I'm saying is that they're vegan. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so's vodka. No. <laughs> Have an Oreo. <laughs> I, can, I can get behind that. Or tequila, that's made from agave. <laughs> Not allowed in the house. All right. Anyway, like what, is, what, is the, what is the audience, uh, the listeners, the, the hearers of this uh, great and wonderful podcast think? Uh, are those frozen meals? Healthy? Are they not healthy? You know, are they a stopgap? Are they something you rely on? You know, comment in the section below and let us know. Yeah, email us. We've got, we've got to get that community engagement out there. Let's go. Because also, like and subscribe. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> With bell notifications turned on. Bing. And tell us what you think and ask us more questions because they questions do come in and we do want to answer them. So uh, we want to hear from you. Let us know what you think. All right. What's the, what's the big question of the day there, bud? All right. Big question of the day is what are GMOs and are they good for you or are they bad for you? Uh, General Motors stock offering. Yes. Good. Good, good okay. for you if you got in early. Genetically modified stuff? Mm, yeah. I'm on the So Josh, enlighten us. I have the definition. Okay, so GMO, also known as a genetically modified organism. Um, in my opinion, it's not something that you should be afraid of at all for personal health reasons. You mainly hear it in context of food. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, these you know, prepackaged meals that I eat, they're, um, they're non-GMO, but I don't have anything against GMOs. Um, so what is a genetically modified organism? So a genetically modified organism, as the name suggests, uh, it's you take the genes of something, say like soybeans for food, and you actually go into the you know, genetic code of that plant and you alter it in some way. But why? So you can do this for a variety of reasons. Um, for soybeans specifically, they have modified them to produce healthier oils. So there's not as many. Um, oh, where did it go? Maybe this will make GMOs sound less scary. Okay, go for it. Um, so genetically modified organisms have been happening for thousands of years. It just sounds a little scary when you label it genetically modified organism because you think of a mad scientist in a lab concocting up some monstrosity. But people have been crossbreeding plants, foods, animals for thousands of years, and that is also genetically modified because they were not – they're different. They're different offspring are different from what the original plant was and people have been doing that for thousands of years in order to try at first trial and error into creating something that they wanted uh, either a more sustainable type of corn corn has changed significantly from the first time that it was um, grown and produced by the Central Americans the ancient Central Americans um, and then you know if you want to look at it outside of the scope of food, dogs and cats are genetic, genetically modified organisms through crossbreeding um, because people were like, I like the way this stunted little runt looks out of this litter. And there's another stunted little runt out of that litter. And now we're going to make Pomeranians and pugs. And now we have a scourge. <laughs> but beside that, um, uh, like like uh, Squash was was saying now, 
with advancements in um, biotechnology, we can get into the actual DNA and selectively change things or introduce other things to make, um, like he was talking about, soybeans that produce healthier oils, um, other plants that are uh, more insect resistant. or insect resistant, more sturdy and hardy, um, more nutritional can grow them in different environments or an environment that is typically not hospitable to that type of plant. Um, that kind of stuff. So GMOs sound scary, but um, they're not really like, at least in my opinion, introducing anything that's going to make you grow a third head. Josh, finish your thought. Um, yeah. Like Ben was saying, it's nothing, nothing to be afraid of. Um, we've been, you know, modifying organisms for thousands of years, but more recently, you know, with biotechnology available, we're able to change very specific genes um, in different organisms. So the first example that comes to mind is uh, golden rice. Uh, is that something that you have heard of? Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that golden rice was introduced into third world countries. Uh, to make the rice more nutritious um, since there was a, a big problem with malnutrition in those countries um, so this rice was modified to produce a precursor to uh, vitamin a it's called beta carotene um, and beta carotene that's the stuff in carrots that kind of gives them their color as well um, so that's why i turned the rice into like a, a more of a golden color and that's how it gets its name um, so when you eat that rice, your body changes that beta carotene and changes it into vitamin A. So you, right there, they've helped, you know, reduce the malnutrition problem um, in different third world countries. I think uh, the Philippines comes to mind when talking about golden rice. Uh, okay, so I understand that uh, we have been modifying uh food animals for thousands of years but of course it takes hundreds of years or a decade let's say for corn uh to be changed through crossbreeding mm -hmm. the problem we've got is now uh that we're changing something in a season because and we can go we can go in there and if we don't like the way it looks we can cut its dna and modify it that that very next off season and the following season it's totally different so so is the argument here that gmos are an affront to god <laughs> no 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 <laughs> uh no but i think I, I'm just, I'm pointing out that probably, yeah, okay, we've been doing it for thousands of years, but we haven't been doing it at the rate that we're doing it now. And it kind of brings me back maybe to the famous line from uh, Jurassic Park when they're all sitting around the table having lunch after the velociraptors have eaten the cow in the sling, uh, where he goes, you were so busy playing God and asking if we could, we never stop to ask if we should. That's an I feel with like the safety regulations that are part that go into GMOs that maybe that's our, eh, should we? And then they immediately say yes. But I mean, if, if we can make, you know, food in different regions more nutritious, so that people don't die from malnutrition, do we not have an obligation to do that? Well, see, now here comes the philosophical question, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, should we modify their food to make it more nutritious or should we just give them the vitamins that they need? Or should we look at global warming and the effect that the climate is having and fix that so that they can grow what they need in those areas that they have traditionally grown that their ancestors grew thrived on i mean, I mean so there's like it there's so many different aspects to the question and to the answers that's true but i mean if we're talking about climate change and in the meantime before because climate change even to 
begin to reverse it. It's, that's going to be a decades long process. So they're still going to be need, need to be able to grow their own food in that time. Right. If we can modify the food to grow in more, you know, be more drought resistant. In that well, time. and I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be Debbie Downer or Darth Plagueis on all of this, but, um, you know, the, the, again, we're so busy asking if we, you know, we could, we never asked if we should. Um, so are we ethically obligated to do it? I don't know. Are we? We always seem to lead in to anything that we think is going to, that, that we're doing in terms of, and we're using GMOs as a thing here, like, oh, well, we can do this and that will help all those people. Don't you want to help all those people? Well, of course, no one's going to say no. No one's going to say just let them die. Like, um, you know, so, you know, that's an ancient old argument of, you know, we're doing this because we're helping these people. But are we? You know, so. So that's well, the, the whole, the phrase, the path to hell is, or the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Good intentions. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. So genetically modified organisms. So where do we stop with that? I mean, we have DNA testing now. We have things they can do with embryos they, that parents can decide, wait, we, it, it, this one's showing it'll have, it could possibly have a greater risk of Alzheimer's or this childhood disease that runs in the family. We don't want that. Can we modify that genetics? I mean, where do you draw the line at? That's too much. That's not enough. You know, those are the questions I have. Yes, Josh. <laughs> okay, on that point, there was a scientist a couple years ago now, a Chinese scientist, um, who against all ethical regulations in the world uh, used what um, is known as CRISPR-Cas9. It's a gene editing tool. And he modified the genes of a human embryo. And his intention was to make the embryo um, more uh, resistant to the HIV and AIDS, if I remember correctly. However, he, he did this on his own, and the, the scientific community has renounced him for it. Crucified. Um, and his editing, it, didn't, it wasn't, you know, 100% just going to take this um, gene and, you know, remove it or change it. There were some other edits in there that were unplanned. Um, it's and, like well, running code on a computer. You can introduce a code into a computer, but that code might also introduce a bug into the software. So then you have to chase some bugs for the rest of your life. Right. So at this point, at this point with gene editing, we have, you know, reserved it for plants and soon, you know, uh, soon to be animals on the, on the FDA website. Um, under their frequently asked questions about GMOs, one of them is, are there GMO animals in the food supply? And the answer there is there soon will be. The FDA has approved an application that allows marketing of what's called Aqua Advantage salmon, um, which is a salmon that's been modified to reach an important growth point faster. Um, yeah, that just sounds great. Yeah. So... For everything else besides human, it seems like, you know, we, we'll, we're willing to make those changes. But when it comes to human right now, uh, once we, you know, open that door and go through it, we can't go back. Until Mr. China Scientist Man, Super Baby, comes out of the woodwork from nowhere where he hit it. The, uh, you know, and I think let's get back to what we were talking about a little more. We're probably... You know, this with this question, when we're not talking about genetically modifying humans, we're talking really more about, I, I think we are anyway, more about genetically modified food and whether it's good or bad. Yeah. Um, so from a personal standpoint, we do not buy anything genetically modified. Um, and it, it, it is just a personal choice that we've made. We don't, we don't. We don't care if you've crossbred a, a corn plant to get it to get bigger and it's taken you 10 years to get there um, because you've had two corn plants that 
hopefully weren't genetically modified that you're using to get to a certain end product. Um, uh, but of course, we've also, we, in not doing genetically modified, we buy organic. So it's had no pesticides and no herbicides poured on it, um, which we prefer not to take into our bodies. Um, you know, so, so we would rather stick, I guess, all natural with our food. And we don't even, you know, uh, you know, as we horrified everyone at the beginning of the podcast with fish and chips, uh, we do not buy farm raised fish. That is a, a, because we don't, we don't agree with that. I do the same thing. I try and buy, um, ocean harvested fish. I buy the fish. Farm raised just is like, it, it, I don't think it tastes as good. And that's how you got tilapia. Tilapia is horrible for you. Don't get me started. That's a rabbit hole. Here's the other thing because we grow a lot of our, um, or try to grow a lot of our vegetables. When we do it, we look for seeds that, or, that are organic and that are the um, heirloom seeds. So they're, they're like, you know, we end up with purple tomatoes because that's how they were. Or we end up with, you know, they may be red and black splotched or striped because that's the heirloom seed. That's how it came out. I mean, this last year we did heirloom carrots and had purple carrots. Taste the same. Um, they were a little bit different. Actually, they had a better taste to them. But, you know, that, that's just our personal choice. And what, Josh, let me throw this out to you because you're the one that's done some research on this and obviously you've got a biomedical engineering degree. What about the concerns of hyperallergy sensitivity to GMOs and GMOs that uh, may increase the cancer rate? I know that there are a couple of the big major concerns that people throw out with genetically modified. Um, as far as I can tell on that, when just because you change like one small gene, that's not going to increase the cancer rate because you ate, you know, modified corn. Um, as far as, you know, concerns that like, oh, these GMOs, they'll get into, into your system and they'll change your genes. Um, that doesn't happen. If that happened, like, like cows don't become grass that they ate, right? Like it's just... Right. A, just a fucking silly <laughs> argument. <laughs> um, Let me eat this corn. <laughs> I have fingers on the cob. <laughs> <laughs> Hurry up, Morty. Get out of here. Everything's on the Break cob. Get the hell out of here. Everything's on the cob. <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, yeah. So like for, for those arguments, you know, I, I, I don't see any validity to them. Um, right. And, it, and that's as far as cancer goes. I'm not so sure about like the hypersensitivity allergies to them i don't know of anybody being allergic to to like gmo products that's not something i've heard of well it's it, the concern is that you take a gene from something and put it into something else and uh, you know and i'm going to use a really extreme you know mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't happen in gene uh, genetics i wouldn't think where you take part of a say an almond gene and put it in a corn plant, you know, to oh, get, to get okay. the corn to do whatever. And someone like me that's got a hypersensitivity to almonds right. eats the corn and suddenly goes, holy shit, you know, I'm, I've got this allergic reaction. Okay. I, I see your point with that one. Um, the only thing I have heard on that point is that it, it is always, you know, some very specific compound in the food that you're allergic to that causes that allergic reaction. Um, and if I remember correctly from class, um, they've started making peanuts that they, they don't produce that allergen in there. Right. So people alert, normally allergic to peanuts could eat, you know, those type of peanuts. What peanuts on an airplane again? Holy crap! What, what's yeah, the you point won't... though? Like you're not you're not playing roulette with death, man. Oh wait, no, you still can. You put allergy peanuts in with 
the non-allergy peanuts <laughs> and roll the dice, baby. Do I need my EpiPen today or do I not need my EpiPen today? <laughs> First thing is we got to get flying again, damn Roner. <laughs> I fly just fine. I've flown a lot this year, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes, then you can wear your mask the whole time you're home. Yeah, but, but one I have a other... neck gator, it's comfortable. Yeah, that's fair. One other point I want to bring up about GMOs is that you know, it's not just relegated to food, like plants and animals, uh, but also in the, in the bacterial world, uh, which mm-hmm. has had a, a massive, massive impact on the medicine that we use. So one of the first uh, GMO bacteria that we made was for producing insulin. Um, so for all you diabetics out there, be thankful for GMOs. I mean, not thankful for the companies that charge an arm and a leg for it, but. <laughs> it's better than losing an arm and a leg. So yeah. Um, and even in, in my education that I did, I um, genetically modified some bacteria um, not to produce insulin, but it was a very low level kind of edit on an E. coli bacteria, which it's, it's actually surprisingly easy to do. <laughs> Because <laughs> bacteria, unlike you know humans and other animals, like if there's some DNA floating kind of next to them, they'll absorb it and be like, "Ooh, what's this?" <laughs> <laughs> Which um, you know that's how you know different you know bacteria mutate from year to year, that sort of thing. But um, All right, All right. So uh, we've used it to make medicine we've used it to improve uh nutrition in crops and food and we've also used it to increase yields in food so that we can get more from less land yes which of course we have to because we just we decided long ago that it was great to turn our farmland into big cities so we've now got less land and need to produce more food but i guess are we are we looking at now this is becoming going to become mainstream because i know i know right now particularly in the united states by law they do not have to declare something genetically modified until 2022 yeah and uh, i'm glad you brought up the mainstream thing um because looking again at the fda website says in 2018 gmo soybeans made up 94 percent of all soybeans planted uh, GMO cotton made up 94% planted and 92% of corn planted was GMO corn. So really, even even though I choose to buy organic and they're not labeling, because to label it non-GMO is voluntary at the minute. Yeah. So I could actually be buying soybean that's been genetically modified but grown organically. Yes. And yeah. still think that I'm buying healthy stuff. Yeah, that that is a concern. But um, the other concern uh, with that, the old FDA bamboozle. <laughs> <laughs> Got you again. Pulled it. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, I pulled a little sneaky on you. <laughs> <laughs> but um, with that, I guess the concern is that it'll homogenize all of the food that we eat, um, so we won't be getting a huge variety anymore it'll all be like you know one type of corn one type of rice one type of soybean Um, right especially in those plants that are pesticide resistant um, right they have been known to like spread from like one farmer's field to another one and since they're resistant to you know pesticide and stuff beyond going out there and pulling them out by hand it's it's going to be hard to you know know which ones are gmo yeah we got to get that greenhouse bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Grow your own food, folks. Yeah. Those heirloom seeds. You're, you're getting worked over by the government. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. What else do we have? Ben, what are your thoughts on GMOs? Um, I'm, I'm good with GMOs, honestly. Um, for now, up until some maybe more research comes out or somebody goes full Dr. Frankenstein on some food, uh, I'm okay with them now. Um, I feel like 
to some degree that they're probably the future, um, given the fact that we have less space to grow food. Um, and if you want to think of things in a very sci-fi type um, lens, like we said, like I think I mentioned before with aquaponics and hydroponics, I think that that also is the future um, of how food will be grown. So instead of having vast amounts of farmland as cities and that kind of stuff expand, you might just move more into um, large warehouse type situations where food is grown that way, um, which global warming could also play a factor into that given maybe the environment outside becomes less hospitable. Um, and then, you know, you just, you you'll have to genetically modify food to be able to yield more or resist certain things or stuff like that. And also think that um, they'll be important if we, for whatever reason, um, figure out how to colonize Mars, we're not going to be able to grow food on the surface of Mars. Um, so we're going to have to figure things out for, you know, biodomes or whatever, but that's hey. a whole nother can of worms. Hey, Matt Damon did it in the movie. <laughs> and, 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 and Elon Elon's going there Elon's already come out and said SpaceX is going to Mars it's not going to be government sanctioned but he's going anyway I, I Ooh, space pirate there we go yeah Our um, next step is Star Wars <laughs> um, Elon make me a lightsaber the Elon, may be, that is ridiculous. Elon may be Palpatine look out <laughs> all hail the Chancellor <laughs> look man my online moniker is darth fader so i'm all for it <laughs> more power to the sith oh dear <laughs> um what uh what do you think josh wrapping up good uh, wrap, bad on the fence wrapping up i would say overall good there are some cons to it um but as far as you know future of <laughs> food goes it'll definitely be more uh genetically modified um and recently they're they're starting to i don't know if you guys have seen this but they're they're looking to produce what's called lab grown meat yeah oh i have heard yeah. of that yeah nah bro i ain't about that let me slaughter my own animals please yeah but the the idea with that is that it reduce it will reduce water consumption and will stop uh, methane production in cattle. So, stop uh, cows farting. Yeah, I mean, it be less cows farting if you're growing your own. <laughs> I don't like it, man. I don't like the, the, the idea of just walking in and next to a, a, a potted plant, there goes my meat also growing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what am I going to do? What? Hold on, guys. You want steaks for dinner? Let me walk out to the meat bush. That means two things. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh. <laughs> so, but still, like, gross. I'm not trying to like, peel back leaves and be like, I steak. <laughs> I mean, if you, if you look at all those sci fi movies, though, like, uh, and all those fully colonized planets like Carmina and all of those, that's what they're doing. I'm bringing they're, cows with me, and the cows are going to be They're babies. growing meat in a lab. They're I'm growing killing the babies. Food in a lab. Yeah. Um, I'm out. Sorry. I'm the negative guy. I'm and out. They don't even I, eat meat. This is one of the reasons. I mean, <laughs> or, uh, I, don't even, I don't even eat beyond meat. But that's plants. Yes. And that has <laughs> got so many chemicals in it, you may as well eat a steak. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, we don't even do the Beyond Me. The, we did try it one time. And then we read the ingredients. And then we uh, <laughs> decided no. And this is uh, hashtag Burger King Impossible Whopper sucks. Speaking of fast food and plant-based things, McDonald's, whatever your freaking focus group was for your plant-based burger, McPlant, really? That was the best name you could come up with? Here's our McPlant. Is it a house plant? Is it a burger? No one knows. Does it come in a Happy Meal? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Mick friggin' plant, yo. Just bring back the McRib. I want my fake rib-shaped patties with pickles and onions. Hey, that's coming back at the end of the year, I think. Fuck you, McPlant. 
Oh, guys. What was the, uh, what was the, uh, maybe they should have just called it the McGrew. Oh, Groot. Groot. I'm the Groot. I'm, I'm the mixed Groot. <laughs> I want to eat that. <laughs> okay, superpowers. McPlant, McDonald's. Y'all couldn't, y'all got big brains up in the office and would y'all just rip a line of Coke before this and said, <laughs> McPlant, this is the best idea. And everyone else was like, yes, more cocaine, please. It was genetically modified, so it's okay. What's on GMO cocaine? Now they're just sprinkling that mess on their food like salt. <laughs> this isn't the, this isn't the 60s anymore. The executives don't rip cocaine lines when coming up with ideas. Wink. Okay, Josh, what did you think of today? <laughs> All right, and that brings us to the end of the episode. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening and suffering through the end of this with us. But um, until next week, uh, I've been Josh. I'm Mom. I'm Dad. I'm your resident clown, Ben. Yep, and please send us questions for us to answer. Um, Absolutely. We want to hear from you. Um, yes, we know you're out there. We know you're listening. Like, subscribe. I see the bell notification. <laughs> Dad has a certain set of skills. He will find you. <laughs> Bye.